daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words of him and the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the Holy Angels. So the Lord says, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. You need to pay a price to follow Jesus. Are you prepared to pay a price to follow Jesus? Seriously? Are you prepared to pay a price to follow Jesus? Let's look at what is the price here, okay? Luke 9, 57-62 now these are all from our Lord. Uh. Okay? Luke 9, 57, 62. Now it happened as they journey on the road that someone said to Jesus, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. I will follow you. Follow you wherever you may go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes. And the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, Follow me. But that man said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And then Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but, but, Sure, I will follow you, but no problem, Lord, I will follow you. Rest assured, I guarantee will follow you, but what is the part here? Let me first go and bid them farewell who are in my house. Let me go and settle my thing first. Let me go and make my millions first. Let me be rich first. Let me be famous first. You know, when I'm rich and famous, huh? I have the power to bring people to Christ because I have influential. But I think this is a better way. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. If you choose to follow Jesus, you can never look back. If you look back, the Lord says you are not fit, not fit for the kingdom of God. Yes, amen. May God, where is your grace? Where is your mercy? Where is your goodness? Where? Where? The grace of God, the mercy of God is to help you to follow Him. When you choose to follow Him, you will experience that grace, that mercy in your life to help you to accomplish what He desires you to do. Understand? Understand? When you take that step of faith to follow the Lord Jesus. You know, in the year 2006, I've written here, I remember, 29th of December 2006, you know, 29th of December 2006. New Year is coming, you know, right? 29th December, a few days, New Year is coming. So, I said, Lord, what do you want me to do for the New Year in 2007? Please let me know. That was my prayer when I was seeking the Lord on that day itself. I kneel down, I worship the Lord, and my prayer is, Lord, what do you want me to do? Show me on the 29th December 2006. And when I opened the Holy Bible, straight away, the Lord showed me Mark 2.14. Can I have Mark 2.14? Straight away, eh? I opened the Bible, only. the Lord showed me Mark 2.14. 
And he passed by, he say he saw Levi, the son of Alphysus, sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. This is what the Lord tell me. Just that simple word, follow me. That was what the Lord has given to me. 29 December 2006. For my new year, 2007. So, okay, Lord, I follow you. I will follow you. Praise the Lord. I was living a good life, you know, in 06. Because why? Uh, the Lord blessed me with the business, all right? And uh, I don't need to do very much. Okay, I'm very comfortable with the income that I have. Right? And the Lord gave me a 1,200 square feet office size, which I only got, include myself three staff only, and my personal office inside for personal toilet. Wow. Okay? Yeah. And, and not only that, not only that, we use that office for ministry work. So the ministers, you know, use the office, we have uh, meetings, we are getting a lot of things done, right? And I supported the ministry, you know, because uh, the earnings that I get, right, I use it to fund the ministries, all right? And we do a lot of mission work. I was like, wow, finally I have made it as a Christian. I have a business, I'm very happy with it, I don't need to worry. And not only that, I'm doing kingdom work, I'm doing mission work, I bring believers to Korean prayer mountains, all right? Yeah, during that time. Okay, and I follow a spiritual mentor, right? I be a good disciple and I follow a spiritual mentor, right? Then, in 2007, something shocked me. You know why is it something that shocked me? My spiritual mentor tell me, uh, sell your business away. I was like, are you serious? Sell your business away? If I sell the business away, what am I going to fit on? If I sell my business away, where is this ministry going to house? If I sell my business away, who is going to support the ministry financially? If I sell the business away, how can I go do mission work? I would not have money to do mission work, you know. But he said, sell the business away and serve God full time. I was like, Am I not already serving you, Lord? Am I not already serving the Lord full time? And yet, my spiritual father tells me to sell the business away and serve God full time. But the Lord tell me, right, follow me. By the grace of God, I just sold the business. Of course, with a lot of questions, right? But through the course, we need to learn obedience. Isn't it? Because when God speaks, and God can use His servant to speak to us. Right? So I sold the business. Now, when I sold the business away, do I make a lot of money from it? I tell you, no. Don't have. Alright, I'm still, I'm still, I have, I didn't make a lot of money because this business was sold to another friend of mine who will only pays me when he has a business. You understand? So I don't make like a few hundred thousands of millions, nothing at all. Okay, let me tell you that. Uh, Alright? So financially, you know, not that I, wow, I accumulate a lot of wealth behind me. Okay? So subsequently, from 2008 onwards, I am without job. I am without job. 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. By the grace of the Lord, Pastor Julie, you know, supported me financially. And I thank God for her. But, me as a man uh, of the household, hey, hey. <laughs> aren't you supposed to bring income to the family? If you ask Pastor Julie during the season of time, she will be confused, you know. What is this man? Mid-life crisis uh, in the 40s. I was in the 40s, okay, at that time. 
midlife crisis in the forties. Even myself, I was like, am I having midlife crisis? Is this an excuse for myself not to find a job? But it's not. Because every time when I ask God, God, when can I come back to the marketplace again? When can I come back to the marketplace again? The Lord's answer is always no, no, no. For four years, for four years, I became a house daddy. Right, taking care of my daughters, doing all, you know, taking care of the house. But that is the season of time that the Lord trains me, that the Lord mold me. That is a season of time that I have a different experience with God. And that's the price that we have to pay when you want to really follow Jesus. Because that's a season of time the Lord really shows me uh, from where I was uh, this high, and you will drop me from this point come to this point, and you drop me from this point, come to this point, and you drop me from this point until at underground you cannot see me. You understand? I came underground, cannot see me, cannot find me. Okay? The Lord will break you to the bottom until you own nothing and yet you're happy. This <laughs> Have 